Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing out there in Radio Land? Well, guess what? It's that time again for the Freedom Radio Broadcast, brought to you by Cheryl and Fletcher Ministries. You can find out more about my ministry at www.SherilynFletcherMinistries.com or www.SherilynFletcherMinistries.org. Are you ready tonight to be empowered? Are you ready for a life-changing word? Are you ready to be delivered? Are you ready to be set free? Tonight, tonight, call a neighbor, call a friend. Tell someone that the Freedom Radio Broadcast is on. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I am so excited tonight once again. You have the Freedom Radio Broadcast brought to you by yours truly. I'm so excited for what God is doing in our lives, in my life on today. And I'm grateful today um, for his wonderful, I mean, he is so great. He's so awesome. And um, I'm so thankful to be a part of the family of God. I'm always thankful when I'm alive and God has spared my life to see another day. Um, wow, I am so excited to all our listeners on today. And for those of you that took the, that takes the time out to hear what God is saying and to, you know, to join me, I appreciate that. And I thank God for his Holy Spirit that enables me to be able to speak to God's people. I am so privileged and honored and humbled to be able to speak to God's people on today. Let me just say a little about my ministry. Um, just today, you know, there's a topic that I, I want to talk about. And the topic is, um, I'm saved and I know that I am, or am I? And there are a lot of people that I've found that don't understand or don't really know if they're saved or if they are um, going to heaven. Um, a lot of times we knock on the door and we ask people if you should die tonight, where you think you'll go. Some people say, I don't know. Some people say maybe heaven. Some people um, will say, you know, they're not sure. And so, you know, the word of God clearly tells us what is expected in salvation. And when we don't know, the Bible says the people perish for the lack of knowledge. When we don't understand and we don't know certain, know certain things, it causes us to um, not live uh, the life that we should live. We won't live successfully. We live in deficiency instead of being able to um, um, operate and function in what God has called us to do as children of God on this earth. Don't forget, in the book of Genesis, God told us that we should... We should replenish. We have um, we have power and authority, dominion over the fish of the air, the bird of the sea. I mean, the bird of the air, the fish of the sea, <laughs> the beast of the field. And he gave us the power and authority over these things. But if we don't know and we don't understand our power and authority, don't understand who we are and understand our position here on earth, you know, we could live a life, um, unsuccessful life and a life of a lot of pain and frustration because we didn't take the time to learn or just simply don't understand um, who we are and why we were here. Well, um, I want to talk about, and I'm going to teach from my book. It's called, I'm Saved, Now What? Um, this is a spiritual guide for new converts. And the reason um, I wrote this book was because uh, when I got saved, I had a lot of questions because I thought it was when you get saved, you know, you automatically become this perfect person and you are sinless. There's no post to act. I did not understand um, um, my part, understand the work of the Holy Spirit. I did not understand um, what God does or what happens at the point of salvation. You know, I was expecting a magical you know, little magical feelings, you know. Um, so everyone has their own um, imagination of or idea of analogy of how what should happen at the time of salvation. And I believe this is the most important message that we should preach, uh, we should talk about, um, to let people know, um, to understand what it means to come into Christ. Because it's an awesome thing to be in God. It's a joy. It's a peace. You know, knowing that you have a father, knowing that you have someone that loves you unconditionally, knowing that you have someone that you can talk to, someone that understands. Because the Bible says Jesus was touched with every infirmity that man have been touched with Jesus have been touched with each and every one of them so he understands and he knows what we're going through and so because a lot of people don't understand this is how a lot of people will get um, um, fall into error or you know give up 
and just stop following God and give up on going to church and give up on going to God and give up on the whole safe thing. You know, I've heard people say, I've done that safe thing before. That don't work. You know, I believe that deep down, persons that are calling themselves atheists, I believe that deep down, they're angry with God and they don't simply understand because he blew his breath in us and everyone. The Bible says only the fool says in his heart there's no God. And they simply do not understand. And I could be wrong. They simply and sometimes a lot. Sometimes when you when I've spoken to some persons, um, there is like okay if if there's a God up there and all of this chaos and and war and and evil things is going on in the world, then why don't he just come and change it? Why allow it to happen? I there has not there cannot be a God. So they feel like God is a, this wicked person or we are like lab rats and he's just looking and seeing if we're gonna make it out of the maze and so they have their idea and sometime God have taken away or have, t- have taken away their loved ones and they're angry with God because why did you allow my my loved one to die? You know? There there are a lot of times that persons have believed before but then they lost that belief because of things that happen and situations. And if we don't understand things, simply, you know, we, we're not interested in things we don't understand. That's just the truth. We, we really, we, we, we don't, you know, if we don't understand something. We, we don't like to be a part of it. And so that's why I'm going to, you know, this salvation is vast. So I'm going to do my best within this hour to just, you know, kind of explain and break down because I want more souls to come into the kingdom. I want fishes to come. I want people to come in to know Christ, man, to know the joy of serving God, to know how awesome it is. You know, if I had known how awesome it was to be with God, I would have done so a long time ago, but nothing before it's time. Now is the acceptable time, you know, and, 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 and so I found out that in going um, from door to door and witnessing the person's some people feel that they're saved because they got baptized. Some people think that they're saved because they got baptized in the Catholic Church. They got a sprinkle and they got a certificate and people really think that they're saved. Some people think that they're saved because they go to church every Sunday. I'm telling you, these are real stories. People really think that they're going to heaven because they're moral. Some people think that they're saved because of the goodness or the good work that they're doing. You know, you have religions that they have to put in their 40 hours a week or more they put in their 40 hours a week or more to see if, um, um, to put in their 40 hours a week or more um, and they believe that this is now their part in paying back God for what he did on the cross. Listen to me. Salvation is free. And Jesus wants every one of us to have it. And he wants you to have peace and know who you are. Uh, you know, and, and I, I meet people all the time who are not sure. I don't know if I'm saved. I'm telling you, this is so common and so, so common in the body of Christ. You know, I've heard a story and it was really funny. This story, um, I, and this is a true story, I believe, the person who told it. And they said that um, what happened was... <laughs> Um, what happened was this, uh, this person came and they had this, um, preacher that came in and, um, he talked about, (laughs) he talked about, um, um, he was preaching and he did the altar call to salvation. So, um, the person, his deacon or something of that status, someone of that status anyway, they went in and they, um, they went in and, 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 and they went up to be saved. And so to the preacher's shock and surprised, you know, he was curious as to why would one of his lay ministers or deacon, I don't remember, would go up to get saved. You know, he's been this all these years. What you mean? And so, you know, after church, it was said that he asked him, well, what happened? You know, why did you, why did you go up to get saved? He said, well, you never asked me was if I was saved. You put me in the position, but I never gave my life to Christ. Are you are you all understanding me? And a lot of times we allow people to function because they look like they save or they're faithful and they're coming to church. And truly, they don't, they're living a double standard. And truly, they don't understand what they're doing. And so again, don't forget you can find this on create space lulu.com you can find us on amazon or you can find it on sherilyn fletcher ministries.com listen this have a lot of information that 
for a new beginner so you will understand exactly what is going on in your life. You will be sure of your salvation. You don't have to guess it. You don't have to think about it. As a matter of fact, we use this book in our Bible study for our new converts to teach them and to help them to understand um, what happens when they accept Christ and what happens at, at the beginning of salvation. You know, it's good that we are getting people saved, but God has put a burden and a passion not that uh, we get excited that they're saved, but that they remain in the kingdom and they understand this walk and this journey. And I say that all the time because, listen, it breaks my heart when I see people don't understand and don't know the joy it is in saving uh, what Jesus did on Calvary. So let's talk about this. Now, how do I know? You know, you said I'm saved. I'm saved and I know that I am. And then I would see some people say, well, am I, am I, am I really saved? How do you know that you're saved? How do you know? Well, let's, let's, let's back up. You know, the Bible says in John 3 and 16, a very, very familiar scripture, because you know, when y'all have Bible study or there's little Bible trivia, tell the truth. And every time you ask someone to quote a scripture, that'll be one of the first scriptures they quote. That's an awesome thing that they know that God loves them. That and Jesus wept, right? So John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, a lot of times, a lot of these new age religions and all these other religions, um, I think that they stop right there where you say believe, because a part of the new age is believing. Just believe that Jesus died for your sin, past, present, and future. And if you believe that, you you okay. You you okay because he already died. So what you're about to do, if you're about to sin, he's already died for that. So don't worry about that. Just believe that he died for that, and you go ahead and you 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 know you you live you you do what you got to do. And so that is. Is um, really leading um, leading astray, and that's taking it really out of content of the Word of God. So the Bible says, "For God so loved the world." Why did God begin to declare to the world that He loved us? Because when Adam and Eve was given a mandate in the garden, and their mandate was to be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, replenish the earth, enjoy the good fruits, man, and lay by the lake, catch some fish, do what you got to do, you know, pet the lamb, you know, pet the lion, do what you got to do. And their job, God bless you, hello, James, their job was to just, you know, just to take care of the garden. They had an, man, can you imagine that? Just chilling, chillaxing, the young people say, no worries, you know. Um, you don't have to be trying to find food or find nothing. Everything was provided for you. Well, we, the Bible says in Revelation that um, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because Satan has been thrown down from heaven. And so he is. he was here on earth before creation. And so now here it is now. They were in the garden enjoying themselves. God bless you, Tennessee. God bless you. And so they were in the garden and they were enjoying the pleasure that God had given to them. Now listen to this. What happened? They were deceived by Satan. He was very subtle. He's subtle. And a lot of times people are deceived because... Listen, when I'm telling you that I hear a lot of people say, I don't even know if I'm saved anymore. I don't feel like I'm saved and they don't understand um, things. And that breaks my heart because I know the trick and the lies of the enemy. So he did the same thing to Eve. What did he tell Eve? He said, listen, did God really say you cannot eat that fruit? Are you sure God said that? Maybe you misunderstood. And he got her to think out of the will of God. He got her, he stray, caused her thought to stray, her thoughts to stray out of what God, and then her lust and desire, she already had this lust and desire to know more. And so the lust and desire to know more was easy for Satan to tap into. And so now, does sin entered the world. And God tell us in John 3 and 16, I love the world. And so I'm not going to allow you to be condemned to hell. I'm not going to allow your life to just, you know, allow everything to just go like that. I'm going to send my son. He's going to be the ultimate sacrifice and he's going to pay the price for you that you now can have a right to the tree of life. So now when sin entered the world, we were cut off. Our spiritual man was cut off from knowing who God is. Now every child that is born is born without the knowledge of knowing who God is. They have a sinful nature. We don't have to teach them how to kill. We don't have to teach them how to, how to steal. We don't have to teach them how a lie because that nature and that desire to in them wants to always do um, sin. So now 
How do I know I'm saved? The Bible says so. The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. The word of God is truth. What is truth? The word of God is truth. So now this comes by faith. You see, our salvation comes by faith. So let's talk about grace. What is grace? Grace, I, I like to allude it like this. Grace, we are in the dispensation of grace. This is the last period. Okay, the last dispensation. So I'd like to allude it to this. Let's say you go into the court. And um, let's say you um, rob and stole a million dollars. And the judge say to you, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to let you go free today. It's okay. Yeah, everything is, we, we wipe the slate clean. That is grace. That is grace. Oh my God. We don't, we, there's nothing you can do to earn it. So when people say, well, you know what? I've heard when we, when I go to witness the people, they will say, um, you know, I don't want to come to church like this because I know I'm not living right. What? That's an awesome time to come to church. That's where God can prove himself to you and you can really know that he's really there. And so, um, you know, or people would say, um, you know, I, I want to get it together first before I give my life to Christ. That's another trick in the lie of the enemy. You know, we, we can never get it together. We can never get it together, you know. And so um, Satan will trick people and make them believe that, you know what, you got to get it. You got to mm -mm, don't go in there because that's a holy place. It's a hospital. It's a place for the sick. Jesus said that I came for the sick. I came for those that are sick. I came to help those that are sick. I didn't come for those that are well. I come for those that are sick. He hung with thieves and sinners and he hung with people that were um, disowned and disrespected by society because he let them know that he for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life life and so in there it's talking about the perishment which is the lake of fire and it's also talking about the everlasting life which is when we sleep and we go and our bodies become uh, from mortal to immortal and that's a whole nother story so let's talk about this how do we know that we saved immediately you ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart immediately the Holy Spirit comes and indwells on the inside of you Jesus said I will not leave you comfortless but I will leave in you a comforter who would lead you and guide you to all truth so immediately the Holy Spirit comes and indwells and he teaches you and leads you. He is now, he convicts you of sin. He shows you the way. He lets you know that, okay, this is not the way. How do, how do you know that? Why are you saying, how do you know that woman of God? Because it says here in John 6 and 44, let's read that from the King James Version. I'm a King James Version girl. It says, no man can come to me, that's God, to Jesus, except the Father which had sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. No man can come except they're drawn. They have to be drawn to God, and they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. And so when they're drawn by the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit is able to teach them, and able to um, convict them of sins, and help them to see that they're in need of a Savior. So now you get to this point of where you're understanding, um, okay, I need God. I, I, I realize that, whoa, my life is not how it should be. Whoa, I really have a need for God. I want to change. I have a desire. I've seen people, they come to the altar, they boo, they cry, because they don't like the state that they're in. Because the Holy Spirit allowed them and let them know that this is not the position that God had intended for your life. And so you must understand some things now. So now it says here, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, listen here, if my spirit is not in you, you're not of me. And so the Holy Spirit is the evidence he, that he comes and lives on the inside of us and he teaches us to follow Jesus. He leads us and guides us to all truth. He shows us the way. He helps us to do the right thing. He helps us to stay on the right path. And so um, a lot of times now, here is what Satan does. In the midst, hey, in the midst of um, us trying to get to know and, and coming into salvation, what happens is the enemy comes in and reminds you of your past, reminds you of your guilt, reminds you of your shame, 
remind you of all the things you used to do, mind you of how you used to drink, how you used to smoke. So you're trying to get your praise on and you have these flashbacks of all the things. <laughs> you have these flashbacks of all the things you used to do. So what he does, he, he reminds you of who you were. And I've seen that. I've Listen, I've seen people cried. I've heard people inbox me crying. And um, um, well, you know, when I say crying, you can hear through their words if you have you know spiritual discernment and they were saying that they left church because you know they were judged they you know they felt judged they felt um you know uh one of them they i think they'd asked them to be an usher and i don't know this lady but she was saying they asked her she was an usher but they kept saying you know they were saying oh i don't think she need to be an usher because her life is not like this and blah blah who she used to be and what she did and it 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 cost her to feel it it really really cost her to feel condemned and and feel worthless you know satan is really doing a good job at tearing down god's people and causing them to be less than what god called them to do a lot of people are not walking in, in according to the perfect will of god and then I, I have another young lady um one of my spiritual daughters and i asked i said honey what happened when i, I hadn't seen her for a while and i said what happened um why are you not going to church well she said to me she just started crying I said, what? What happened? She said, well, you know, um, I should have listened to you. I said, what happened? She said, well, you know, I went and did what I wanted to do. And now I have the HIV. And so when I went to church, people were scorning me, didn't want to sit near me because they knew, um, you know, didn't want to shake my hand. They were avoiding me. And um, it made her feel horrible. And so she stopped going to church. Um, I know that's not a good excuse. Uh, and so if we understand, that's why it's important that we make sure that what we are teaching is the word of God, that it can be rooted and grounded in persons so that they understand when the enemy comes in and when the tempter comes and he tries to sway them, they will know the word of God. And we have to it reiterate that it's by faith. It's not by feeling. It's by faith. This walk is by faith. A Christian walk is by faith. Is not by what we see. It's not by um, um, the things. Because a lot of days you don't feel like it. You don't feel God. Sometimes you lift your hand and you pray and you don't feel God. But we have to know by faith that he's there. Now you might feel any way. The minute you say the sinner prayer, you might not feel any type of way. You might not feel nothing. But by faith you have to know that he is there. By faith you have to understand that God is there. He's your very present help in the time of trouble. By faith you have to know that God has changed that something on the inside is taking place on the inside of you. Now, let's look at this. What is the what did it say? When we come to Christ, these are some of the benefits we get. The first thing we have, we have victory over sin. That means now that the Holy Spirit will help us with those sins and those things that we're struggling with. The Holy Spirit will help us. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will help us and, and, and lead us in the right path. And so I need you to understand when you come in Christ and, and Romans, Romans the 8th chapter is one awesome chapter. It says, therefore, now there is no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh. So if you now understand that you, your walk is by faith, everything you do is by faith and you're going to meet some road bumps and you're going to meet some days where, oh God, you're wondering if you should have chose God or or, or you're wondering sometime if there's a God up there. Sometimes you're going to have some days, those Elijah moments where you're going to be like, God, I, I can't do this anymore. God, I don't think I can do this. God, this is too much. God, this is too hard. That's why the walk is by faith. And what is faith? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Um, the evidence of things not seen. And so our hope, our hope, man of course, our hope. When we hope for something, the faith brings it to manifestation. So you have to understand, um, faith is like a, a, a seed. You plant it, and, and when you water it, your hope is watering it, and, and that water will bring, that water is like your faith that will cause that tree to spring up. And so you need to understand, this walk is by faith and faith alone. And, and, and when I say by faith, that means that um, <laughs> the enemy will always cause you to doubt God and always cause you to doubt that he's actually there, that he's doing it. There's so many people that don't even realize there's so many, we have so many doors that close to us that people say, Oh, I don't want them to do Jesus, or I don't have time for that right now. And 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 oh, you know, I know him, yeah, I know him, he's been good to me. And 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 they simply don't understand. 
you know god bless you woman of god good to see you and they simply don't understand that is so much more and so when we teach the word and they understand the word understand when you come to christ the holy spirit is your sealer he seals you until the day of redemption he seals you that means that he put the seal of approval that you are a child of god and you have to know that you're a child of god how do you know that you're a child of god there's something that takes place on the inside the bible says, if any man be in christ jesus behold he's a new creature all things are passed away and behold, you become new. And so with these these little steps and these things and, and, and the word of God, you have to know who you are. Because I'm telling you for a long time, I did not know. I used to be, you know, I used to be um, asking God to come into my life. <laughs> I, I know they I know they say they're too young to be saved and save is boring and and um it's it's you know they don't they're not ready for it I had that a lot I had that a lot man of God they had that a lot I had that a lot where um young people are saying you know I'm so young I don't want to they make it sound like it's a prison sentence oh my god like God is sentencing them instead of where it's like a place of where you know it's a joy and a peace you know, and, 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 and maybe the lives they see, sometimes they look at people's lives and they see, and, and if I see an example, I wouldn't want that either. You know, listen, my daughters, um, this, you know, my daughters, they, you know, they said to me, they said to me, they said, mommy, the way I see you suffering and the things I see you going through, mm -mm, if there's salvation, I don't want nothing to do with it. You know, I, and, and I said, okay. I said, but you know, God is faithful. And we just gotta continue to trust him. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta continue to trust him. But the thing about it is, is I said, okay, what about now? How about now that God has now put me through the fire, bring me out of uh, a refiner's fire and a full of soap? How about that? You know. And so now it's like they're seeing God, but now because they have been so far and straight away, it's gonna take time. I know what God is saying: the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You know, and yes, woman of God, you're right. They always feel like they're missing on something. I used to feel like I'm missing on something. When you don't go out on a Friday or a Saturday night, you feel like you're missing on something. And you know what? You could not go out for years. I mean, you go, it's the same thing going on. It's the same thing going on. It's the same thing going on. It's the same old thing. You're not missing anything. Same thing. You're getting drunk. You're spending a lot of money. But this is what Satan does. He deceives people. The Bible says Satan is the God of this world. So we have to do a good job as evangelists. We have to do a good job. That means that we cannot be sidetracked. We have to make sure that we are focused on what we're doing. That means that we got to focus on, on, on telling people and bringing people to Christ. So you can't just go to them. And that's why you have to know. You have to know. You have to know what you're saying. You have to un make people understand. You have to make people understand what it is. You know, listen, y'all just had the carnival. Jesus, that carnival was carrying on. Oh my God. From Zion. Listen, I saw that carnival. I saw little clippings of the carnival. I saw the people. I saw people were lay out on the streets, don't know themselves after the carnival. You know, what an opportune time to get out there and witness and tell people about Jesus. Yeah, they might say, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what an opportune time, you know. Um, if, if, if an opportunity comes like that, let's not go there to judge. But let's go there to say, you know what, this is an opportune time to tell people about Jesus. This is an opportune time to let people know who Jesus is. Because a lot of people, they just don't understand the joy we have. And so... Yeah, some Christians do make it boring. I, I lying for true. But the thing about it is, and that's because maybe they don't, they don't really know. They don't, they don't really understand the gift of salvation. That means they probably don't even understand what they have in Christ. You know, if 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 they make it look like you know, you know, listen to me. When I was growing up, man, listen here, Jesus, um, being saved is like a prison for real, for real, for real. You know. <laughs> You couldn't, you couldn't go to the movies because that was a sin. Going to the movies was a sin. Lord, in the morning. Listening to reggae was a sin. Lord, in the morning. Playing cards was a sin. You, you, you can't play cards. That's a sin. Okay? Playing cards was a sin. Everything was a sin. And so it made it like, okay, what do you do? And, and so they make it, they, they give you this law. They tell you, they come like Moses and they come and give you this 10 commandments and it's impossible to keep, you know, and they make you, you, you know, or they, they, they make you feel like, you know what? 
listen, Desi, don't start that because I have some of them people from my church. And let me tell you, we were talking about that the other night. And we were talking about love music. Should they play love music if they're married um, with their spouse? Um, that's a whole nother topic. Because if you ask me about that, I'm going to go old school on you. I'm going to be the boring one. So that ain't that's not the one to that's not the one to talk about because I, 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 I haven't I haven't gotten the revelation yet. You know, so we were talking, we had an awesome topic, and this was the same topic about salvation, about knowing you who you are. You know, they, they they're saying, okay, the weed, but the, the weed is, is plant and the weed is good for your body. You you understand what I'm saying? They're saying, yeah, but too much of it is too much, you know. So we have to either we have to understand, either we're gonna follow Christ. We can't do this. I'm telling you, they got weed card over here, woman of God. You get the weed card. A lot of the old and young got their weed card. I'm telling you. And they go get that weed. So you can't do nothing to them. They got their card. So they're getting it from Mary Sue and everyone. And so they want to know. They say, well, you know, they talk about the natural herb. That is nothing wrong with smoking a natural herb. We had a wonderful time in Bible study. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. And then they were talking about the wine. What about the wine? Isn't the wine, you know. And so we got to understand. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. They wanted to know. These are young people. They want to know. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then, you know, we got to make sure. What is it that you think, you know, they'll say people drink red wine. They say people drink red wine um, with their dinner. They don't see anything wrong with it, with a glass of wine. Well, like I said to them, I will not try that because I know me. I know where I come from. I know that I had a problem with alcohol. And next thing you know, I'll be drinking up their belching and, and, and you won't even know because you'll be like, boy, pastor getting more anointed. No, pastor gets spirits helping out because after a while, you're going to want to continue to drink that. That's how Satan comes. See, the thing about it is Satan is very slick. He don't just come and, 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 and throw everything on you. He does it brick by brick foundations are built strongholds take time he laid the foundation first the foundation is laid first when the foundation is laid they come and he pour and he builds that foundation brick by brick and before you know it if you don't check it and you don't know who you are and you don't understand guess what these things become a stronghold in your life and you know what happened you can't no longer you you got this battle going on in your mind that's where satan fights because he knows the mind the mind is where we have these battles these battles are in the mind you'll be surprised of how many christians have mind battle don't know how to fight listen and i believe god called me to deal with persons with mind battles i'm like oh my god because uh, most persons i know they they they, they can't you know they, their mind one minute they're good and the next minute they're saying things like you wondering like okay um you okay you know and 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 i understand i'm patient because i know that satan is a trickster I know I will not touch it either, woman of God. I will not certain things I will not touch. And I will not touch Barry White either. That's your business. I will not listen to no Barry White. You understand? I got enough problems. I got enough problems with my flesh. I don't need Barry White to get up in there because I might can't get him back out. You, you all understand what I'm saying? I might not want to pray no more. All I want to do now is do Barry White and say, honey, let's go honeymoon every night. And, and, and I don't have time for God anymore. You all understand? I mean, that's just me. That Listen, that is me. I, what, you know, I, I can't, I, I, listen, you know, so I, I, I simply don't feel that, um, as a child of God, that, um, you know, these music, uh, are said to be, these music are dedicated to satanic worship. You need to understand that a lot of these persons actually sell their souls. And we know this, just like how we believe that the Chinese put kill dolls and humans and feed them but we still go and eat the Chinese because there are spirits and they would lure you into doing things that even though you don't want to do it so I'm not going to play Barry White because I don't know what Barry White was thinking or doing or what his intention was when he sung that song I don't know the mindset I don't know what he uh -uh, I'm not doing now if you want to do it that's fine with you you know they say yeah but that's for the flesh okay that's a whole nother topic we're going to debate at another time but not today so when it comes to that and the alcohol, I'm old school on that. Now, they said, you know, the Bible, don't say nothing about it. Listen, that's a whole nother topic. There's a whole lot of things in the Bible that declares and speak to those things, you know. But we need to know. So that's what I'm saying because people are not sure of their salvation. They want to still drink. What about red wine? Jesus turned, you know, the first thing. Jesus turned water into wine. 
Peter and water and the wine. Did it say Jesus left the, left the wedding drunk? Did did it say Jesus was tipsy in him, him and his disciples? Did it say that? Well, if he turned water into wine, I guess it's okay. That's not what that said. Now listen to me. The thing about it is, his voice alone will get you, honey. You right. And sometimes, listen here. You gotta understand. Um, um, and if you are dealing with a spirit, you could commit adultery with Barry Wright. And if you listen to me, you gotta be careful. So this goes beyond that. Thank you, woman of God. So let me tell you now. So my thing about it is now. We, we got to just be so careful. So either you're going to be with Christ. It's a sacrifice. But it's a great sacrifice. It's what God intended from the beginning. Now, I know back on, like, in the islands of Jamaica, you, you can't, you know, um, I know certain religions, you can't, no perm, no weave, um, no makeup, no jewelry, no pants, none of that. And that's fine. That is fine. You understand? But listen to me. The problem I have with those type of religions is they focus so much on the outer appearance. They focus so much on how people look on the outside that they are not seeing what is happening on the inside. That people are not... Listen, I've known people. I've known um, 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 persons. I've had friends that... I'll never forget. Uh, one time I went to preach, and I didn't know. I didn't know. So they said they were. I saw everybody sitting with their hand under their chin, and they were just looking at me like, "Who in the world she thinks she is?" So my friend, she said to me, "Oh, they was like, how how dare me let you up on my pulpit without a hat?" Well, I didn't know. She didn't tell me put on a hat. I could have put on a hat. I'd have put on a Dodgers hat. I'd have put on a what a Yankee hat. Whatever hat she wanted to put, I would have put it on. I didn't know that. Listen, it doesn't matter because if if that's the way for you. If that's the <laughs> if that that's the truth all on this year, coming right back to that. If that's the way for you to listen to me, it doesn't matter. I remember a time the lady a lady came to me from um the Seven Day Adventist and she asked me if I can speak to the young people. And so I could see her dilemma. I said, Don't worry, I'm not gonna put on any makeup and she said, Oh, thank you so much. I went next week. If that's how you want me to come, I don't mind. A plain Jane, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. You know? And then there's another you know, we, we talk about modest. So there's so much things that people talk about modest as, oh my God, um, modest is nothing. Modest is um, small earrings. Modest is this. Paul said, not the bread, not the gold. But, you know, then another part of the Bible, God give the people the gold. You know, but the people took the gold and began to put it as idols. You know, so it's like, it's so much confusion. And there's so much things that, um, you know, but it's in the word. Yes, a lot of things are in the word of God. But it's the Holy Spirit. The Bible said the letter kill it. But the Spirit of God gives life. It's only the Holy Spirit who's the author of the Bible that is able to help us. And that's why I would urge every believer, before you pray, before you read your Bible, pray. Please pray each time and ask the Holy Spirit to keep you on the right track, to give you the revelation, to help you to understand what the Word of God is saying. Because when you get the Word of God, you can hear it all over the place. Because there's only one God, one Holy Spirit. Right? So you can hear that same Word from other persons and and your spirit is going to be able to identify with what people are saying to you. Are you understanding me? So you either, listen to me, how do you know I'm saved or am I? How do you know? You know because the old things that you used to do all of a sudden you don't want to you have no desire you start to lose desire for the things of the world you start to lose desire you want to spend more time with the man that you love you don't need barry right you got jesus right there the holy spirit whispering in your ears and telling you oh god how much he love you and 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 you swinging these beautiful sound to people listen to me i'm saying that because let me tell you something not everyone that is married is delivered there are people who still being fought from the marine spirit who's not been delivered who still have perverted spirit who still um have that spirit um of where that adulterous um spirit and so that don't mean because you married that means it's gone you know that spirit is still there so what about those people now you listening to barry white your wife in there you know what barry white can do for you barry white open up a whole a can of worm i'm telling you there are a lot of persons Listen, there are a lot of persons, they don't mean to commit adultery, but we put ourselves, the Bible says, flee the very apparent of evil. I'm telling you the truth. So you listening to Barry White now, you and your wife get mad, you're only speaking for weeks now. You think Satan ain't going to send someone there to you, and all you could think about is Barry, I don't see nothing wrong. And all of a sudden now you're mine. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and people will be like, well, how does this happen? What do you mean how it happened? I, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I feel within myself. Now, that this is me. You understand? This is me. And I, I feel within myself that if we're going to be all God, let's be all God. You know, I just feel that God, um, everything that that um, the enemy 
everything that God does, the enemy is trying. He always tried to come in. No turning off, no lights. You can turn off the lights. You can turn off the lights. You can turn off the lights. You can even light your candle. But do that without all of that, man. Because what people don't understand is when you come together as a husband and wife, you come in together under the covenant. You know your um your intimacy is a worship unto God. So how God go ahead, get your worship. The Bible said the two shall become light. The two shall become listen, you got me saying light. The two shall become one. So how are you gonna be coming one if you got Barry White in the midst of it? If you got Luda ones rough in the midst of it, how are you gonna become one? How how God gonna work through that? you y'all I mean I might not be making sense, but you know, for me, I I I have not reached there yet. I've not reached there yet, so you know, please, you know, it, it, you know, I stand to be corre- corrected. But you know, <laughs> the thing about the thing about that is, is that you you gotta you gotta be careful. We have to be very careful. We have to understand that Satan is like a roaring lion. He's roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And so we need to understand that there are many people that are visited by demonic spirit in the night. Those spirit of incubus and succubus, they are there. Satan knows that sex is the only thing that gets in your mind, your body, and, and music. Your body, uh, music gets in your mind and body and soul too without you asking. So Satan knows that sex gets in your mind. It interrupts your mind, your body, and your soul. Because if you had a good sex, listen, to me you again you're praying all you're thinking about is whoa man oh my god you just feeling good the whole night man you grinning y'all y'all understand what i'm saying man you just feeling like a million bucks and, and 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 if it's not with your husband then you have to understand now you have now done something that is out of the will of god so now you got these spirits that you got to deal with now that have been attached to your life and so now that they're attached to your life and you so you have to understand we, we got to deal the Bible says that the work he began in us is a continuous work. So God never stopped working in us. So I'm just saying to you, if you are in Christ, stay in Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your GPS. Jesus said, I will give you a comforter. He said, I'm going to leave you comfortless. Because he knows if he leave you comfortless, you're going to be a Barry White every night. So he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I am going to pray to my father. And he is going to give you the Holy Spirit, which will lead you and guide you to all truth. So I need us to understand that. Alcohol, smoking. People smoke because they need to calm their nerves. Whatever happened to the peace that surpasses all understanding? If you need to smoke and drink to calm your nerve, then you need to check. Because maybe you don't understand that God... God will give you peace but you have to believe and accept and embrace that peace that he will give you a peace that you don't even understand that peace that you'll be like whoa I know I was supposed to act like this wow I don't act like that no more God is truly delivering me he's working to work on the inside of me so you have to understand the Holy said the Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus he has become a new creature all things are passed away and new things so we get the new things we get those old things they pass away so i want you to understand you make up in your mind because that's why you so mix up and focus and so maybe that's why you don't know if you're saved because you want to you want to still you know you want to still um do the music you want to still listen to barry white if you single what you doing listening to barry white and in and, and the tub and, and with the candle what you you setting yourself up and we talk about that you can't do huh and then you can't do um 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 Netflix in a movie. We talk about that. You can't do Netflix in a movie. You can't do that. Then you know you're single. Don't come talking about you doing Bible study to get at the house. No, the Bible study can turn to something else. So don't do it. So it, it, and in other words, he will keep us. God will keep us from falling. He will. And I'm not saying that you're gonna listen. The minute you get salvation, Satan sent a whole host of hell after you to discourage you. I have seen so many persons. I'm the type of person. Um, I'm analytic, so I look around and I study things. I'm like, wow. Okay, I'm noticing that a lot of persons when they come to Christ, they will say, wow. It seems like all hell broke loose. Seems like all hell broke loose because we, they came to Christ. And so now, because they came to Christ and all hell broke loose, I said, okay, so hmm. So the devil is tricking these people into believing that the minute they come to Christ that now uh, um, um, all of a sudden the things that they were that they were being challenged with um, the light comes on and he makes them believe that this happened because they came to Christ but not realizing that you was ever not paying your bills you were ever going through you ever had this record and so Satan will make them believe that you know what leave Christ I've heard persons who said you know what 
ever since I made up my mind to start coming to church and, and getting closer to God, help her close. Yes, it's supposed to happen. But it does not happen to draw you away from God. It happens to bring you to God, to bring you closer to Him so you can get an understanding of who you are. You have to know that if you are in Christ Jesus, the all you are go is going to pass. And this is, an, this is in the present tense. So that means it's becoming. You are constantly, every day, becoming do. Paul say, modify your flesh daily so you're gonna have some challenges but remember child of God this walk is by faith it is not by sight it's not by what you feel because some days I don't feel like going to church on a Sunday morning oh I shouldn't say that you the pastor some mornings be like can I just lay here can I just not go to church today I don't want to go to church today God I'm not feeling it today. God, this is, that's what I'm going through is too much. I don't want to do this. But you, you got to remember that this walk is by faith. You got to remember that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. So when you give your life to Christ and you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and personal savior, you are born again. Now, born again is it takes time born again is where the holy spirit comes in and do the regeneration and the regenerate and that's why people say oh i can't believe it dizzy i see dizzy say he's saved and i see him falling out the bar room but they don't understand that he is becoming new i'm not talking about presumptuous sin and i'm not giving you a license chocolate folks to go and sin what i'm saying to you is you're gonna have some struggles paul had a thorn in his side and he, he was asking oh my god God removes a stone three times and God said, no, my grace is sufficient. What do, you, what do you want us to understand? That thing that you're struggling with, we all have something we're struggling with. Trust me, we all do. There's always something that we're struggling with. And so what God wants us to do, he wants you to know that his grace is sufficient. That means that when the enemy comes after you, he said, no, she's covered by the blood of Jesus. And, and, and I got to cover I got to cover the grace, got to cover. So that means the enemy can't come and accuse you of that thing that you're struggling with because God knows in his, listen to me now, hear me good. God knows in his infinite mercy that you're asking him. I used to ask God, please God, please God, help me to stop drinking. Please help me to stop drinking, Lord. Please help me to stop fornicating, Lord. Please help me, God. Please, I don't understand this, God. I love you. You know this. My heart was right. But I didn't understand that the regeneration, the Holy Spirit was making me over and making me over and bringing me to the place of understanding who I am and whose I am and helping me to know that I have victory over sin. I have victory over diseases. I have victory over generational curses. I don't have to live in that state because I am a new creature. I am to live as God intended from the garden. We were in the garden. He said we must what? We must have dominion. We must, re we must replenish. We must be fruitful. We must multiply. So now I can live like how God intended for me to live when I give my life to Christ. I can have that peace that surpasses all understanding. I have the authority now to bind those things and, and, and the, on earth. I have the authority now to lose some things. I have the authority now. God has given me that key now. He said to me, listen. Behold, I give you the key. Bind, loose. Then he said, you can trample on scorpions because he knows Satan will always be there trying to deceive you. Listen to me. Your salvation is by faith. Know that you're saved. Yes, you are going to mess up. The Bible says righteous man fall seven times. I say fall. Right? I say fall. The righteous man falls. I didn't say sit down. I said fall. The righteous man falls seven times. I didn't say sit down. That means don't say well. Well the woman said the righteous man falls seven times. And God knows that I have a problem with this lying or this gossiping. That's not what I'm saying. The righteous man falls. So when you fall down. you Nobody intentionally fall themselves down. Unless something is wrong with them. You know. So a righteous man will fall seven times. But the Lord God picks them up. The Lord is able to keep us from falling as well. So in certain situations. You're going to have victories in, in areas. You're going to have victories. You're going to have a, a trip. You're going to have a lot of victories. You know. But then there are some days that. That you are going to not have that victory. There's some days that you might, someone might cross the car and you find yourself telling that person off. Repent. Repent means to turn away from. And a lot of times you, you know, when I, when I got saved, because I got saved, I got saved but a thousand times. Yeah, I got saved plenty times because I didn't have no idea. So I used to get saved all the time. Because the thing about it is, is when you sin, you felt like, oh my God. I'm going to hell. Oh my God. And you have to repent all night. Oh my God. Lord, I repent. Please, God. Please forgive me. Please, Lord. I repent, Lord. Please, I repent. 
you know, and um, because we simply don't understand when we are saved and when we accept Christ, this is by faith. We have a part to play. Our part to play is, how do we play our part? Our part to play is, what we what do we need to do? This is what we need to do. We need to make sure that we are in a Bible teaching church. Make sure that, the, listen to me. I know, listen to me Sunday goers. That's not going to do it. You must attend Bible study where you can get the enrichment of the word of God. And be taught how to stay under function. The Bible said we got to contend for this faith. So Satan is not going to allow you to just stay saved. No, he's not going to allow you every day until the last dying breath. He will continue to come after you real hard to stop you from even getting in. So you have to know it's by faith. Trust the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is, oh my God, he is the bomb.com. He is the bomb. You got to say plain that child. We had to go to the altar and say, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is our, he is our GPS. He is our GPS. One of the things, there are a couple of scriptures that I use for me. And I use these to uplift me each and every day. You know, and, 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 and I remind myself, I said, okay, the Bible says, should the son of man suffer and all the world go free. So that means I'm going to have trials and tribulation. Paul already told me that I have to endure it as a good soldier. So what God is trying to let us, listen to me, you have to be kingdom minded. If you're earthly minded and you, all you think about is your bills and trying to get a car and husband and all this other stuff, you have missed it. Those things are already yours. I will continue to say it because I want people to get their focus of these things that you have no control over. You are a kingdom. You are a kingdom citizen. That means that you have access to everything that you need down here pertaining to life and godliness. You have the kingdom. You are a kingdom citizen. Your faith activates what you need. Are you understanding me? Your faith activates what you need while you're down here on this earth. So now you need to know tonight that, listen, I am truly saved. You know what? I'm saved. And that's what inspired me to write this book. Listen, again, you can find this on lulu.com, createspate.com, amazon.com, or sherilynfletcherministries.com. I wrote this book because I was lost. I did not understand what it what it meant to be saved i did not understand what i was supposed to do you know i felt like someone that threw me in the water and that's it i had no idea this is for people who just got saved who have no knowledge of understanding of god or church you understand and so i want you to understand that when god said that he loved the world he loved everyone in spite of and the awesome part about it is so when i think about scriptures like wow there's absolutely nothing that can separate me from God. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. That means God loved me. So I have that reassurance that he loved me. Listen, you can't tell me God is my man. You can't tell me that he don't love me. You, There's nothing you can tell me about him to make me feel or doubt his love for me. Absolutely nothing. Because I've learned to trust him. I've learned. I've seen how awesome he is. I've seen how he's such a good father. He takes care of his children. People need to know how passionate you are about your savior. And how much you love him. He cares for us. So Satan comes after your mind. He comes and plants thoughts. Evil thoughts. And that's why. Don't forget. I'm going to leave you with this. Paul say. Put on what? The whole arm of God. Put on the whole arm of God so you can withstand against the vile of the enemy. And I want you to understand, there are some times, there are some days that, some days I'll be like, God, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Can I just sit in the pew, please? I just want to sit in the pew. Let me sit in the pew and be some of those people who just come to church and don't do nothing. Can I just sit in the pew for about a month or so? Can I sit in the pew? I, I resign. I fire myself. I don't want to do this anymore. Because the flesh will always, we always have, we're going to always have a war that is going on in our flesh. Every day, child of God, you're going to have a fight between your soul and your body. So a lot of times, here's another thing. We beat up ourselves. I've seen people beat up themselves. Oh, I sin and I, you know, and um, you know, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I messed up so bad. Okay, I pray with them. I say, okay, repent. You know, being sorry is not repentance. Because if I sorry, I could do it again. But if I repent, I'm turning away from. That means my mindset, everything is turning away. Not just my mind, my mind, my body, and my soul is turning away from 
those things. That means I have no more desire for those things. Hey, baby girl, I have no more desire for those things. That means now that I am becoming a new creature. Regeneration is taking place. It has to take place because of what happened in the garden. We There was a depravity, but now we are now being regenerated. We are now becoming more like him. He is now taking the time to make us over again. Remember the Bible say the pot, the clay was mad in the hands of the potter. We were mad in the hands of the potter. When Adam and Eve sinned, bloop, that clay gone. But what he said, he said, oh my God, look what Adam did. Okay, Jesus, I need you to go down. Go down and I need you to go and die for these people. I need you to pay this price for them because there's no one. I'm looking, I'm looking across the earth and there's no one that can pay this price. It has to be you. You're the only one that has to be it. It, it, it It's a mess. But if you pay this price, now I can put this porter back on the wheel. I'm going to make them into another clay. <laughs> that is good for my use and good for my service. Listen. Our job as Christian, Peter said, when thou art converted, convert others. I want you to make up in your mind. Here's a challenge for you this week. Today is almost Friday. Make up in your mind that tomorrow, that every day you're going to talk to one person about Jesus. You're going to tell them, I'm compelling them to come. Compel them to come is not say, man, come to Jesus, man. What you mean you don't know? But come on and say this Lord prayer. Come on, repeat after me now. I've seen people do that now. Come on, I hear the Lord prophesy to you, and and they go and say, Lord, say you gotta be a pastor, and you got you you know you set that person up for failure, man. Don't don't you know unless the Lord tell you. So I, I've so you. Make it up in your mind that everywhere you go, if you go in the food store, if you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you go in the food store, tell someone about Jesus. You go to eat, don't, you know, after you don't eat and get your burp on, tell someone about Jesus. You know, after you all and get that dirties and that, um, what that is, that, um, sna- um, not crack, crack chicken. Boy, that tastes good. After you all and get that crack chicken and get your Kong salad, tell someone about Jesus. After you all and get your, um, what fried chicken be like? Oh, yeah, the Popeye fried chicken. Tell someone about Jesus. Tell someone about Jesus. Go into the gas station. Tell some bamboo. Go into the gas station. Tell someone about Jesus. Wherever you go, tell somebody about Jesus. Just tell them about Jesus. Hey, hi, how you doing? I would like to tell you. Did I have a minute of your time? Man, I'm so excited about this offer. Listen, yeah, when people are selling, they don't care. They say, man, can I have a minute of your time? You see those salesperson, they come knocking to your door in the hot sun and they're trying to sell you something because they want to make a sale. So you got to be adamant about making a sale. And I, you know what I'm talking about. Making a sale. Getting someone into Christ. And this this is free. Listen here. Try the subscription for 30 days. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. I'm telling you. And if they try Jesus and truly give their life to Christ, this is what we need to do. If we do this every day, all day, you'll begin to see so many more people will get saved. Because a lot of people are not going to walk in the doors of the church. But they will. You can see them out there on the street corners. Those people that are sitting on the side of the street, they need to know about Jesus. They need to understand that for God so loved the world. So are you a child of God? You have to confess with your heart and believe in you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So there's a to be confession of the mouth and belief in the heart by faith through grace that you are saved. You have to understand uh, you are a child of God. All things are passed away. So you become new. So don't don't do the same. Don't be cussing and carrying on gambling, doing all this stuff. And you don't want to put away the old man and, and then and then getting upset because things are not working out for you. Listen to me. Jesus the, the bread, the children's bread, the deliverance, the healing, the miracle is for the children's bread. It's not for you living any type of life. That God is he, he's not he is not obligated to do anything for you. The just and the unjust he rain on you. Getting up just him waking you up every day is him raining on you. Understand that. Just God waking you up every morning is him raining on the just and the unjust. So now you have to understand. You you need to understand now. Listen, so now we got this now. We have to understand that there's a regeneration going on. So he's making us over into new creatures understand that and so you have to understand that the holy spirit is your gps he's the one that will lead you and guide you to all truth this thing is by faith you have to know that you are saved and you are going to mess up let me tell you i'm so sorry i know you're prim and proper i know you got your eyes dotted and your t's crossed i know that i know you have a double i know you have a degree baby but listen to me i want you to understand that you are going to mess up you are going to mess up because we have a sinful nature that never gets saved. That sinful nature never gets saved. That sinful nature always has a desire to sin. Hey, ABC, let's get some liquor. Hey, let's do this. You know, the sinful nature always has a desire to bring displeasure to God. And that's why it's important. 
Paul told us, put on the whole armor so that we can be able to withstand the vows of the enemy. Let's get our mind right. Let's let's give this mind and consecrate this mind according to Romans 12 and 1. Let's give our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. This is our reasonable service. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we follow the word of God and we understand what God is saying to us through the word, we'll be okay. And so I want you to understand you will fall. Don't keep it to yourself and don't be ashamed. When altar call come, you go up or you can repent right then and then. And if you have to repent, the Bible tells us to forgive our brother 70 times 7. You could repent. You could repent. You could repent. You could repent. Don't get tied up. And man, I'm so tired. I keep messing up on God. Listen to me. You are a, listen to me. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you possess a soul. That's where the mess is. Right there in the soulless realm. And so until you are taken up and changed from mortal immortality, you're going to have some victories and you're going to have some defeats. But I want you to know that all of this is what God uses to make you over. All of this is what God uses you to help to bring you to the fullest fire and refine his soap so that he is able to make you as a testimony. You cannot say God is a healer if you've not seen him heal. You cannot say God is a deliverer if he's not delivered you from something. So don't allow shame and guilt to keep on repeating itself and all of a sudden you got shame and you got guilt and you're guilty and you're shame of everything and now you don't want to do nothing because Satan got you so bound and you 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 know you you went out and, and, and you did something that you felt was oh my god out of this world and now you're sitting in the back of, you know how people go whenever they feel like they are unclean they sit in the back of the church and all of a sudden I've, I've heard that when they sit near the back that's the closest to out of the door all of a sudden they start to move back 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 but if people understand there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. If people truly understand the love of God and how much he loves us and how much he desires us, he's even married to the backslider. Let me show how much God loves you and then we're going to end this. God loves you so much that even though he died on the cross, check this out. He is still making intercession for you and I. Isn't that a, this, this God is still standing in the gap. He's still standing in the gap for you. He is still praying for you. Understand that. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He said no man can come. Listen to me. No man can come to Jesus. To the Father but through Jesus. And I need you to understand that. There's no way. There's no other way that you can be saved. So if you want to know you're saved. It has to be through Jesus Christ. I've heard. I've been. Listen. We've been and we've heard so many religions. Listen. Going on the streets. You hear. You hear so much things. You'd be like. Oh my God. The church need to pray. I've heard people who say. Well. It doesn't matter. You know. One gentleman told me. It doesn't matter which way we come. All we got to do is come. We can come any way to Jesus. It, 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 it's any road. You could come any, any road. Once all road lead to God. No. 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 There's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. And if you have not come to Jesus Christ, then listen, my brother or sister, you're not saved. You have to come through Jesus. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. So if you want to know if you're really saved, you have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead. You have to know that Jesus loved you. You have to know that he died for your sins. You have to know that when you are saved, he is thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. You have to know by faith though this is by faith this is by faith you're not going to see it this is by faith you have to notice by faith you have to declare it you have to decree it you have to hold on to it and that's like how you believe you know how some to believe um, we got it all you know we, we okay like when we used to be digging and we believe okay well I believe he's not cheating on me she's not cheating on me I believe that child I know he wouldn't do that and child I know she wouldn't do that and just how you believe that you have that faith onto that person but the arms of flesh fail you I want you to have that to have a double faith for Jesus because he will never fail you he will never leave you he will never forsake you how do I know I'm saved because the spirit of Christ comes and live on the inside of you and then when, when we have the spirit of Christ the Lord the Holy Spirit gives gifts and that's where we operate through our gifts and the gifts and calling come without repentance and so I'm going to end with this listen Jesus told his disciples something that I will never forget he said to them, when they came, they said, oh, Jesus, oh, my God, we were casting out demons in your name. Man, you should have seen how those demons bow to your name. Jesus, you bad, man. Your name is powerful. Wow, you got some power. He said, that's good. But I want you to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So I say to you, I don't care how seasoned you are in Christ. 
we have to make sure that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the, I am the branch. I'm the vine. You are the branch. On that day, Matthew 20 chapter and the 20, around the 20th verse to the 23rd, 24th. <laughs> and this remind me. So this keeps me to a place of, of remembering. And, and, and if I get out of line, this reminds me to get yourself together. Because it's not about you. It's all about God. And it's easy to take God's glory. It's easy to feel like it's you doing it. Because Satan will make you feel that way. He will feed you with the lies. He will feed you with pride. He will feed you with it. But you have to know. And you have to get to that place of understanding. That this is not about you. Because there's a time. That the Bible says that many, not everyone that say Lord, Lord will enter. But then the Bible also says that, oh my God, this is this is scripture that, that keeps the fear of God in me. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. This is the, you got to, that's awesome. This is the part that keeps, the, that keeps the fear of God in me. When he said, what? When they stand before that great white throne. And I said, but God, I cast out demons in your name. What do you mean? I lay out on the sick. I prophesy in your name. People were getting healed, and 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 the demons was the devil was red. God, I was I was booming. I had thousands of people following me. God, millions of people. God, I was doing great work. You didn't see the people that got saved through my ministry. God, you didn't get. You didn't see the people. You didn't. I I don't understand. God, what do you mean? You don't know me. This is me. This is me, David. This is me, Sherilyn. This is me. What do you mean? I used to pray and get up all, you mean all them five o'clock prayer was in vain? God, come on. And I tell everyone to come on the five o'clock prayer line, God, no. How you can say you don't know me? This, look again. Maybe, maybe you don't, okay, hold on, hold on. Look, look good, look good. Let me turn to the left side. Maybe you don't know it from this side. God, this me. What you mean you don't know me? What you mean, depart from me, I don't know you. God, no, you're making a mistake. I, this me, you forget, hey, Sherilyn, I used to talk to you all the time. This me. And he said, depart from me. I know you not. You workers of iniquity. Ah, be cast in the lake of fire. That's a sad day. Let's not get caught up. When God saved us. And he get us to the place we are to tell about Jesus. That's all we're supposed to do. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Let people know what it means to get saved. Get as many people in the kingdom as we can. That's what we're supposed to do. Bring them to Jesus. Bring them to him. Bring them to him. Bring them to him. I don't want a hair depart from me. I don't want to be on the side where the goat is. Not me. I, I mean, I like goat meat, but I, I don't be on the side with the goat. I want to be on the side with the sheep. So it's something to think about. Don't ever be so secure that you you. Have your faith now. Your faith is good. Confidence is good. But always come to the place. Awesome. Thank you. A broken and a contrite heart. David had it. David understood. He was in a place of where he was always repentant. Every day we sin. That's why we get new mercies every morning. Every morning. Every morning we have used up that new mercy. All we got to do is follow the, the order and the, the law and statutes of God and we'll be okay. And a lot of times we feel that we okay. Satan will have us feeling like you okay child and you don't speak to me how you could be okay we're not okay we gotta fix that you know or, or you can't forgive your brother you you you're not okay we gotta fix that i don't want to hear depart from me you don't want to be working and doing all of this and you've caused and helped all these people to get into heaven and now when you get to the gate you hear depart from me so that's something to think about Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he will flee. I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this broadcast over and over again. Get some scriptures and listen. This book for those who've just gotten saved. And you know someone who just gave their life to Christ? This is an awesome book. I'm saved. Now what? It helps you. The minute you get saved, it helps you to understand exactly what Satan is going to try to do. It will give you step by step and give you scriptures and even prayer points. And even answer some of those questions that I hear people like the La ask. Where's the, you know, um, the dinosaurs? Where did the dinosaurs come from? It helps to explain the Trinity. Because the Trinity and the Holy Ghost is things that are really misunderstood. And a lot of times there's so much um, definition and understanding of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I try to compile as much as, of it as I can in this book. 
to help people. You know, like, how do I know the right church for me? When was the world created? You know, if God told not to name the animals, were the dinosaurs there? You know, who is God? Where did he come from? Are there errors in the Bible? You know, how we know the Bible is true. And so these are questions and, and things that people, is it wrong to get tattoos and piercings? And, and there are, there's a couple questions in here that people ask that they want to know, that are curious, you know. And so I want you to understand, child of God, oh, child of God, hear me today. Share me today. We are here. He said to go into the highways and byways and compel them to come. Hallelujah. He called us to compel them to come to him and to know him. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. And when he gives us gifts, it's a privilege and an honor. It should make us to a place of humility to know that God, when I think about how God would use a wretch like me, it brings tears to my eyes to know that when I was garbage to other people, I was treasure to heaven. God, yes, we need him. And so I'm saved. And I know that I am. Are you? Do you really know now? Or there are some things that you're pondering. You say, hmm, I need to think about some things. And I need to present some things. I, I pray that you go into your closet and begin to talk to God. You have victory over sin. You have victory over diseases. You have victory over poverty. You have victory. You have victory, 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 victory. When you become a child of God, you have victory. It's the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us to all truth. Listen, if you do not know the Lord and you're hearing this podcast, you say, okay, you know, now I understand. I get some type of understanding of what it means to be saved. It's a faith thing. You have to have faith and believe in your heart. If that's you on today, listen, the best thing you could ever do is give your life to Christ. The best thing you could ever do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. That's the best thing, the best decision you can ever make. Will the road be easy? Of course, no. Because this world has already been um, sentenced or put up or already been scheduled to be destroyed. And so you have to understand. Listen, people of God, I don't want you to ever live again worrying about bills, worrying about marriage, worrying about cars, worrying about things that Jesus tells us the mod is going to eat. If you pay attention to Jesus, you will know how to follow him. Don't worry about those things. God will give you what you need. When, when the children of Israel left Israel, God gave Moses a rod. The rod was what he stretched for. They didn't carry, they didn't have no bunch of food with them. They were hungry. They didn't have no bunch of water bottles with them. You understand? So you need to understand God will provide for you. And whatever God guides you in, he provides. You always know his endorsement. When he gives you a ministry, he'll provide. After you know, you yeah, you're gonna have a little tussle a bit, but after a while, God will begin to provide for you. And so I want you to hear me today. Come to Jesus. Now is the acceptable time. Oh, he is so wonderful. And guess what? You get to know him personally. We know him collectively, yet we all have a personal relationship with him. He is so beautiful and so awesome. He gives you a peace and a reassurance of who he is and who you are. And if you want to give your life to Christ today, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of your grace. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Say, Holy Spirit, teach me to follow Jesus from this day forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you've repeated that prayer, listen, and this is your first time, or even if you've backslid and a lot of times you might not know much about the Bible, I would I would recommend this book. You can find it on Create Space, Lulu.com, Amazon.com, or Sherilyn Fletcher Ministries.com. This is a great read and a great manual and a tool for new believers and new beginners, new converts in Christ. I don't want you to just repeat this prayer and, and stop there. No, this is a journey. And I, I'm here to help you with this journey. I, I got a mandate to help souls to stay with Christ. Help them to understand who my father is. I, I, want, I want you to know. So when you when you come in and you 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 get that access card into the kingdom, now I want to I want you to come on in, come on in the lounge. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what to expect. Let me tell you what is gonna go on with this journey so you would understand the best decision you've made, the best investment you could ever make for your life. 
is when you take your heart and you give it to Jesus and you understand the journey on how to follow him. So I pray tonight that something I've said, I've blessed you. I'm sorry I didn't even give the numbers, but you could have called in. If you want to call in, you might have 60 seconds, 321-360-7025. Or you could inbox me. Inbox me. If you need, if you don't have it and you need this book, I will send it to you free. I, listen, I will send it. I'll, I'll give you the clothes of my back. I love to give. I will send this to you free. You understand me? Or I can send you a... Uh, uh, I can send you an electronic copy of this free. It doesn't matter. I, I'd want souls to know, not just to know Christ, not to come to Christ, but I want them to get to know him and understand how to build a relationship with God so that they, when people ask them if you're saved, they don't just say, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. They would understand and they'll be able to express and know that they know that they're saved. Then Noah will know. And so God bless you tonight. And may God keep you tonight. And may he strengthen you tonight. This is my prayer. Thank you each and every one of you. Those from the Bahamas. Thank you so much my Bahama crew. Man I love you. Love you guys. We got to eat some. 242. 24. Oh sorry. 242. 242 for life. God bless you. I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in each and every week. I really do. And um, I thank you so much. God bless you, woman of God. Continue the great work. Continue to do what is needed. Continue to be on fire for Jesus. <laughs> Continue to be on. Yes, two for two need that. But continue to be on fire for Jesus and watch God. When we do what we're supposed to do, God and his mercies will begin to give us everything that is needed. You have access to the kingdom. Know that and access it. God bless you and God keep you till next time. See you next week. Same time. <laughs> Same place. God bless you. Love you guys.